Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Magic the Gathering. You know what day it is. It is Thursday the 16th and Theros Beyond Death has just been released. So, we are going to be opening some packs. Um, I actually bought a crap ton because I felt like I wanted a lot of the cards and, well, I like opening packs, let's be honest. This is one of my hobbies. I feel like I can splurge a little bit. So, uh, let's get straight into it. I was thinking we're gonna start with some single packs and we'll see. We'll do some tens and just see what we get. Let's go. This might be a little bit of a longer video, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I haven't basically watched, like, al almost none of these cards I have watched. So, this is gonna be kind of interesting. Dex of Toughness is equal to a Devotion to White. Really nice. Two drop. Another another creature you control enters the battlefield or dice. This is a really good, like, heal deck card. Okay, Minions Return. I mean... Um, yeah. So, when creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Triumphant Surge. Destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. This is actually... It's a little bit expensive. Like, it's 4 mana. Not that great. You gain 3 life, though. Flicker of Fate. Exile target creature or enchantment. Then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. This is a good, like, anti-removal spell. Uh, mostly because it's instant and it's kind of cheap. It's 2 mana, so... You can actually just, like, go, <laughs> Oh, you're trying to murder this. No. Okay. Towering Wave Mystic. Uh, deals damage. Many cards. Oh. Mm. A mill card, eh? This is actually kind of interesting. Uh, Moss Wiper, just a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch. Thirst for Meaning. Draw three cards, then discard two cards, and lets you discard an enchantment card. This is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. I like it. I like it. Okay, and we have Shadow Spear as our rare, or actually it's a... Yeah, it's a rare. It's a legendary artifact. One mana, equipped creature has plus one, plus one, and has trample on lifelink. For one mana, permanence you can... Your opponent control loses hexproof and indestroy. <gasps> Ooh, that is super cool. That is, that is really cool. This is actually... Like, this is gonna be super useful, because I know there are some indestructible things in this set. And I think this is gonna be super useful. Okay. Let's open another. All new cards again. Oh, we have a Saga. So, first turn, Scry 2. Second turn, choose a card name. Third turn, when you cast a spell with the chosen name for the first time this turn, draw two cards. And the fourth turn, look at the top, of, top card of each player's library. This is weird. It's a weird one, but I, I, I can see the use. But it's a weird one. Um... Aliros Enraptured, uh, it's the battlefield tapped, it doesn't untap during your untap step if you control a reflection. Uh -huh. Okay, so you need to kill your 3-2 to be able to... This is a weird one. Hmm. Yeah, this is a weird one. Okay. Lampad of Death's Vigil, Enchantment, Creature, Nymph, 1-3. Sacrifice a creature, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. For two mana. Mm, not the best. Let's test some training. Um, draw a card. Plus one, plus zero, and trample. It's permanent, though, so that's good. Vexing Gull. Flash and flying. <laughs> that looks hilarious, by the way. Like, I love that it's flash as well, because seagulls just swoop in at any time. Uh, Heliod's Pilgrim. Into the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So, another one for, like, aura and equip decks. They have been quite, like, they are quite good. Or, well, they are, they are okay, like, already with knights. But this could actually add a little bit. And we just get a rare. Okay. Let's move on. Jesus. Ooh. Atris, Oracle of Half-Truths. Uh, legendary creature, human advisor. Menace, when Atris, ha Oracle of Half-Truths, enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Okay. Oh yeah, that's, that's kind of legit. 
Ar another Archon, Archon of Falling Stars. You could actually, because there are some Archon cards in uh, Throne of Eldraine as well, so you could maybe do some Archon stuff. That could be interesting. Ooh, a new keyword, Constellation. This ability triggers when an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control. Ah, okay, I see. So that is why enchantments are kind of important, because constellation. So, his constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library and in a random order. Oh, you don't shuffle. Hmm. Okay. This is actually kind of cool, I guess. I'm not sure if it's good. It like if you make an enchantment deck, obviously it's good. Um, Lozum Chimera. Four one for three. Escape. So the escape, you may cast this card from your graver, <laughs> from your gravery, from your graveyard, for its escape cost. I see elk and lion and teeth. A lot of teeth. That is actually good. Okay. So escape is five mana. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. That is actually okay. Loathsome Chimera escapes with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So if you play its escape cost, it's a 5-2 instead. I guess it's okay. Like, it, it isn't great. It's a little bit, like, squishy. Satyr's Cunning. One mana sorcery. Create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token with this creature can't be blocked. And you can escape with this sorcery? Hmm. Cool. So you can actually summon two satyrs with this. This could actually be kind of cool. Oh, this creature can't block, not can't be blocked. Okay, that kind of removed a lot of its, like, it's not as good anymore. Um, Aurora's Blessing. Fire mana, enchant creature you control. When Aurora's Blessing enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. And the creature gets plus one, plus one. This is actually really good. I think this is really good. Like, it is four mana. But considering, like, a 4-mana burn spell, or 4-damage burn spell usually costs 3-mana, three, three and you also get to put this on a creature and give it plus 1, plus 1, I feel like this is actually okay. Grim Physician. Like, this is going to be good in aggro decks, maybe. It's a little bit expensive for aggro decks, though. Uh, Grim Physician. 1-mana, one 1-1. One, one. When Grim Physician dies, target creatures and... Uh, target creature and opponent controls get minus one minus one until end of turn uh, warbriar's blessing enchant creature you control when warbriar blessing enters the battlefield enchanted creature fights up to one target creature you don't control enchanted creature gets plus zero plus two kind of simple i like it like i like that i like that they are focusing a lot on enchantments because it's gonna go get great with um with Throne of Eldrain. Okay, do we have something really cool new? Theronotis Singer, 2 mana, 1, 3, flash flying. When Theronotis Singer enters the battlefield, Thren Threnody, 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 okay. Um, enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus 0 until end of turn, where X is your devotion to blue. So, that is actually kind of good. It's a, it's a combat trick, and it's also a like small flyer so i'd say it's okay what do we have here treacherous blessing three mana enchantment when treacherous blessing enters the battlefield you draw three cards whenever you cast a spell you lose one life Oof. when treacherous blessing becomes the target of a spell or ability sacrifice it okay so you can kill this off yourself like quite easily um but it is a little bit of a like if you're playing a deck that can heal quite a lot it's not a problem um, but I, I, I'd say this isn't maybe the best card draw. Like, it is three cards for three mana, though. That is kind of good. Okay. Omen of the Dead. One mana flash. When Omen of the Dead enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. You can sacrifice for three mana and scry two. That is kind of cool. I kind of like that. Uh, Omen of the Sun. Oh, so we have different omens. Okay. Three mana, flash. When Omen of the Sun enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, and you gain two life. You can sacrifice it to scry two. I see a certain theme with the scrying. Uh, Discordant Piper. Two mana, two one. Like, dude, you look so weird. Why does this guy look so weird? When Discordant Piper dies, create a zero one white goat. <laughs> okay. 
I don't. That goat. That, that goat. Okay. Voracious Typhoon. Yeah, it's a new. Uh, four mana. It's a creature, snake, beast. It's a 4-4, four, four, and you can escape with it. So seven mana, exile four other cards from your graveyard. Voracious Typhoon escapes with three 1-1 one, one counters on it. So... I'm just gonna get some water real quick. I'm like really dry in my mouth and I feel like I'm just like smacking in your ears. So I'll be right back. Ah, okay, there we go. Next, next pack. Whew. Okay, we have some new ones here. We have the Binding of the Titans. Two mana. Each player puts the top three cards of the library into their graveyard. Interesting that that's a green card. Okay. Exile up to two target creature cards from graveyards. For each creature card exiled this way, you gain one life. Hmm. Return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. I guess it makes sense that it's green. Like, that is actually kind of a good one. I kind of like it. It's sort of a weird mill, it is also a heal, and it is also a way to get a creature back. Like, technically kind of a card draw, not really, but you know what I mean. Okay, Thassa's Intervention, it's an X and two blue. Instant, choose one, look at the top X cards of your library, put up to two of them into your hand and rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. Or, counter target spell unless it's controller played. Pay twice X. Damn. That is... Like, it is expensive. But I do like that it's kind of versatile. I like it. I, I kind of like it. It's a cool card draw kind of mechanic. Um, Helio Because, like, technically, if you do this, um, you can just pay two. Like, it's a four mana and you draw two cards. That is basically it. And it's an instant, so it's kind of okay. Um, and the counter is like, even if you play pay like two mana, that is like the the opponent has to pay four mana, and four mana just like if he casts something big, paying four mana is kind of impossible. So it's basically, if if he is playing something big, it's a three mana counter spell. Okay, Heliod's Pilgrim. Oh, we already looked at you. Screw you. Get out of here. Final player. Three mana, instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or an enchantment. Final player deals five damage to target creature. It's not that good. You have to sacrifice and it deals only damage to creatures. So I don't kind of like it. I do prefer Heartfire in that case. Scola Grove Dancer, two mana. Um, and it's a two two. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain one life. For three mana, put the top card in your library into your graveyard. It's a weird one. This could be useful in a Golgari deck, like where you discard a lot of your library. That could be like a legit thing. Okay, Elite Instructor, Human Wizard. It's a 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. When Elite Instructor enters the battlefield, draw a card and discard a card. Not a massive fan, it's a little bit expensive. I would prefer if it, if it was like 2 mana. Um, Transcendent Envoy, 2 mana 1-2. Flying aura spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. That is actually kind of good. Okay. Let's go with another one. Another one. Ooh, we got a lot of new ones here. Ooh, a phoenix. Let's start with that. Phoenix of Ash. 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two, flying haste. For 3 mana, Phoenix of Ash gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. It also has escape. For 4 mana, exile 3 other cards from, from your graveyard. Phoenix of Ash escapes with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It could be good. Like, I don't think it's... Uh, it's it's maybe good. Like, it's a weird one. Its escape isn't that expensive, though. Like, its escape is just one more mana, comparatively to what you use, like, used to cast it. So this could be good in, like, an aggro deck, maybe. It has haste, so I like that. Um, Heliod's Punishment, 2 mana, Enchant Creature. Heliod's Punishment enters the battlefield with 4 task counters on it. 
Enchanted creature can't attack or block, it loses all abilities and has tap. Remove a task counter from Heliod's punishment. Then, if there are no task counters on it, destroy Heliod's punishment. Um... It's okay, like, it's very cheap. I like that. But at the same time, you could just add a prison realm that is one ma more mana that, like, actually exiles it. So, I kind of don't like this. Uh, Heroes of the Revel. Five mana. When Heroes of the Revel enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token with that. This creature can't block. Like, these satyr tokens are so bad. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Heroes of the Revel, creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Like, they are so bad. Like, they are, like, literally nerfed tokens. Why? Why? Do they have, like, some sort of sick, like, synergy for sat satyrs or something? And they was like, mm, pff, they're a little bit strong. We need to nerf them somehow. Okay. Captivating Unicorn. Uh, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Mm, it's okay. Underworld Charger, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, Underworld Charger, can't block. It has escape. For 5 mana, exile 3 other cards from the graveyard, Underworld Charger escapes with 2 one, one counters on it. So that is actually a little bit better. It becomes a 5-5 five, five when it escapes. Thrill of Possibility. Let's see. 2 mana, instant. As an additional cost to cast this card, discard a card. Draw court. two cards. This is just like a regular... Um, this, this is a classic. It's a reprint, basically. I don't remember the name of it. Is it called Thrill of Possibility, even? It might be. Pious Wayfarer. Uh, human Scout. 1 mana, 1-2. One, that is kind of good. Constellation. Whenever an enchantment is battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. I feel like this is okay. This is actually kind of a good card. I like it. I love it. Maybe not love, but it's cool. Okay, all news again. Like, damn. We're getting a lot of new cards. One with the stars. Four mana, enchantment aura. Enchant creature enchantment. Wow. Enchanted permanent is an enchantment and loses all other card types. Okay, I see. So you can... This is like a D... Like, okay, this is interesting. I like this one. This is, this is a cool one. Um... Boom. Temple of Deceit. Nice. Scry land. I love it. This is just a scry land. I'm not going to explain it to you. It says it's all here. But man, I do love it. Nyx Herald. 3 mana, 2, 3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchanted creature you control gets plus 1 and gains trample until end of turn. Yeah, I, 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 I like this one. I like this one. This could be really good with... Um, uh, what, what's his name? The adventure titan thing that like becomes bigger with the more land you have. Because it doesn't have trample. And combining it with this um, is actually really, really cool. Um, you, you could do it simpler, actually. I don't like this anymore. Okay. Because you have to do it on an enchanted creature or an enchantment creature. So it's kind of it kind of loses its shine there. Um, Nilea's Huntmaster, 4 mana, 4-3. Four, when Nilea's Huntmaster enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus X, pl plus 0 until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I do like, uh, like, the devotion mechanic. It's really cool. For those of you that do not know, devotion is for each, um, green mana cost that you have on permanents that you control. So, like, this one would give one devotion. So, for that is basically devotion so if you have like seven creatures one is like one has two of these green symbols and the rest have one that means that you have eight green devotion that is really cool i do like it it's an old mechanic like they brought it back from a previous set and i like it um aspect of the manticore three mana Flash enchant creature. When aspect of Manticore enters the battlefield, enchanted creature gains first strike until end of turn. Enchanted creature gains plus two plus zero. I like it. Um, I am not going. What the fuck? I. C I because I I'm thinking Icar, right? Ictiphomorphis, morphosis, ictiphomorphosis. Is that a word? 
Ictiphomorphosis, I guess. Whatever. Three mana. Enchant <laughs> Enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a blue fish with base power and toughness of 0 1. I do like the art. The art is actually hilarious. It's great. Okay. Fruit of Tezarius. One mana sorcery. Target player loses two life and it has escape for four mana. Okay. Nyxborn Corsair. Three mana, two four. Simple. Nothing to talk about there, really. Okay. I know it's dragging on a little bit, but we'll we'll do one more pack after this, and then we'll start doing tens, and then we'll start to get to it. Ooh, Thrix, the Sun Storm, for five mana. Um, flash and flying spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater costs one less to cast and can't be countered. I like it. Um, it's a four five as well. He's really cool. He's also an elemental and a giant, so this could actually be. Like, this could be reduced really well. Hmm. Anyway, Destiny Spinner, 2 mana. Creatures and enchantment spells you control cannot be countered. This is really good. Uh, target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. And that's for 4 mana, and it's a 2-3. Uh, drag to the Underworld, 4 mana instant. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to black. Destroy. This is good. This is really freaking good. This is basically a two mana murder. That is actually like disgusting. It's this is going to be good. This is a this is a real good one. Okay, Nyxborn Sea Guard. Nothing really. Moss Viper. We've seen you. Triton Wave Rider. Four mana constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Triton Wave Rider gains flying until end of turn, and it's a three three. I like. Gift of Strength, for 2 mana, instant, target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains reach until it gains reach as well. Ooh, oh, I like. Mm. Wait, is this a reprint? I kind of recognize Gift of Strength. Maybe it is. Plumoxed Cyclops, uh, 4 mana, 4, 4, reach. Whenever 2 or more creatures your opponent control attacks, Plumoxed Cyclops can't block this combat. Okay, that's kind of shit. So he's a really good defender by himself. Like, if he's defending against one creature. If they have more than one creature, you're fucked. Okay. Ooh. Athenia, the cano... Uh, cacophony? cacophony? I, I guess. Athenia, the Cacophony. Legendary creature, uh, Harpy. Flying at the beginning of your... Oh, it's flying. And at the beginning of your end step. Wow, that almost turned into one sentence. Uh, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. I like it. That's cool. That could be really cool. Like, you could make some sort of zombie deck, maybe. Well, they removed most of the fun, like, zombie, like, cards. So maybe not. Okay. Uh, Underworld Fires. Two mana. Underworld Fires deals one damage to each creature and each planeswalker. If a permanent dealt damage this way would die, exile it instead. This is a good one. I like this. It's a really early board clear. Um, Leonin of the Lost Pride. Cat Warrior. When Leonin of the Lost Pride dies, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. I mean, it's a 3-1 for 2, so probably kind of good. Hyrex Tower Scout. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. When Hyrex Tower Scout enters battlefield, untap target creature. If this had flash, it would be really legit. So what you could do with this, ah, oh, sorry, my nose is really itchy. What you could do with this is you could like gain more mana, in a way. Though it's kind of wasted. Like you pay three mana to get gain one mana back. Ugh. Blight breath, cat, cat. What the? F what are these names? Why are they so weird names? Katublepas. Is that? Is that how you say that? I don't know, man. Okay, creature beast when blight breath. Katoble Pass enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls, gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to black. This could be really good. And final death is kind of disappointing. Five mana exile target creature. Ugh, that, is that is expensive. Okay, let's do a 10. Let's see what rares we get, huh? Boom, there we go. Ooh, okay. 
So some new ones. Gravebreaker Lamia. I like. Lifelink. Uh, it's a 5 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Lifelink. When Gravebreaker Lamia enters the battlefield, search your library for a card. Put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. That is cool. That is cool. I like that. Because this you could combine with the jump start mechanic as well. So like, um, I guess black red could be kind of cool. Dryad of Elysian Grove. Over the Elysian Grove, rather. Chat my creature. Three mana, two, four. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to other types. Hmm. Could be cool. Timaret calls the dead. Okay. Uh, saga. Put the top three cards of your library into your bell into your graveyard, rather. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And turn three, you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. Yeah, you can definitely make, like, you could probably make a zombie deck now. This is really good with zombies. Uh, Thassa's Oracle, 2 blue mana, 1-3. When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X card of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library, and the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game? Oh my god, this is, this is super cool. This is a self-mill. This is a self-mill card. So... What you could do, the the real good thing about this is but because like it's when it enters the battlefield, so this two mana will count towards the devotion. And you could just mill yourself. You could mill yourself a crap ton with Tassel's, uh, like with cards and then play out Tassel's Oracle and you just like, boom, winning. Like I think you could definitely stack this to like quite high. Maybe like, okay, okay maybe not that high. Like I'd say 10. 10 devotion at max, like getting 10 devotion is kind of impressive, let's be honest. Um, Tarnika, Akron Veteran, 3 mana. This is a card that I've been waiting for. This is a real good card. You could make some really cool um, white-red combos, aggressive, like really aggressive decks. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, Vigilance. When uh, Aranika Akorian Veteran attacks, untap another target creature you control. Until end of turn, that creature has base power and toughness of 4-4 and gains indestructible. This is going to be really good. I'm probably going to make a deck real quick with her. I guess it's a her? Yeah, it has to be her, right? Or is that a he? I have no idea. Um, whatever. Temple of Plenty. It's a scry land. Nyx Lotus. Mm, Nyx Lotus enters the battlefield tap. Choose a color. Add an amount of mana to that color. This is good in a mono deck. Like, this is a mono deck could be really cool. Like, a green mono deck and play with Nyx Lotus. Mm, I like it. Another Scry Land, I do like. Let's open another 10. See what we can get. Oh my god, that's a lot of new ones. Another Scry Land. I, I, like, I'm just enjoying getting these Scry Lands because I hate not having them. So, Protean Thaumaturge. 2 mana, 1-1, one, one. Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Protean Thaumaturge become a copy of another target creature, except it has this ability. Hmm. That is actually a really good card. I like it. Ox of Argonas, or Agonas. 5 mana, 4-2. When Ox of Argonas enters the battlefield, discard your hand and draw 3 cards. 2 mana escape? Exile eight other cards. Ooh, okay. Um, exile eight other cards from a graveyard. Damn! Ox of Akonas escapes with one, one plus one plus one counter. Uh, Storm Herald. Three mana. Haste. When Storm Herald enters the battlefield, return any number of R cards from a graveyard to the battlefield attached to cr creatures you control. Exile those R's at the beginning of your next end step. If those R's would leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. This could be, like, if you have a lot of R cards, this could be, like, disgusting. It's a 3-2 as well, so that's kind of good. It's okay. Um, Akoran War. The Akoran War. It's a 4-mana saga. Gain control of target creature for as long as the Akoran War remains on the battlefield. Until your next turn, creatures you, your opponent control attack each combat if able. Each tapped creature deals, dam deals damage to itself equal to its power. This is a sweeper. Like, this is a really good sweeper. 
Though it's a kind of dangerous one, because, like, the, the turn two thing is like, ooh, oh, oh, crap, that is dangerous. Actually, like, this could be really cool with uh, Proliferate. So you play this one, you gain control of an opponent's creature, then you Proliferate immediately, so the next turn you skip the one where he has to attack with all the creatures, and then just everything dies. That could be... Oh, they have to attack, though, to be... Like, it's only tapped creatures. I, I see it's... Ah, crap. I forgot to check. Oh, well. Whatever. We got some other ones to look, look through. Shatter the sky. Each player who controls a creature with power 4 or greater draws a card and destroy all creatures. Are you for real? This is a disgusting board, Claire. Four mana as well. It's super cheap. This is, re this is really good. This is just really good. Wow. Um, Hakdos the Unscarred. Four, ooh. Two red and two white. 6-1. Mm, Hakdos the Unscarred attacks each combat if able. As Hakdos enters the battlefield, choose two, three, or four at random. Hakdos has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. Oh, that is super cool. That is so cool. That is really, really cool. I like that. Okay. Um... He should have haste. Underworld Breach. Two mana. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the mana's cost plus... To the, to the card's mana cost plus exile three other cards from the graveyard. At the beginning of your end step, sacrifice Underworld Breach. This is kind of cool as well. I like this. Airboss Intervention. Um, okay. One black and X. Choose one. Target creature gets... Minus X, minus X until end of turn. You gain X life. Exile up to twice X target cards from, from graveyards. Not that great. Um, and that was all the new ones. Yeah, we'll look through all of these. Oh, crap. Oh, let's open a single one. Let's crack one open. Agonizing Remorse. Um, two mana target. Opponent reels, reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. Uh, or a card from their graveyard. Exile that card. You lose one life. Yeah. Elysian Karyatid. Um, that's how you say that, I think. Two mana, one, one. Add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power four or greater, add two mana. This is kind of good. I like this. And I think we've looked through everything else. Rumbling Sentry, we haven't seen, but it's not that advanced. Like, it's five mana, three, six. When Rumbling Sentry enters the battlefield, try one. Okay, let's continue with the tens. Ooh, Heliod's intervention. Uh, two mana X. Choose one. Destroy X. Destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments. Target player gains X. Ooh. This is super good with uh, um oh, what's his name? Ajani. The the Ajani where it's like zero if you have fifteen more health than your starting value, zero mana, you destroy everything. He is... I, I like this. Okay, Bronze Hide Lion. Two mana, green or white. Three, three. Uh, for two mana as well, Bronze Hide Lion gains indestructible until end of turn. And when Bronze Hide Lion dies, return return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with the enchant creature. Oh. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature. You <laughs> With enchant... Wow. This is, like, really worded weirdly. Okay, it's an aura enchantment with enchant creature you control, and two mana, it basically gives his ability to some other creature. That's the best way to explain it, let's be honest. I do like it, though. It's really cool. Okay, um, open another 10. Let's see here. Archon of Sun's Grace. 4 mana, 3, 4. Flying lifelink. Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink. Eh, constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 two, two white Pegasus creature token with flying. Eh. Could be cool. Could be cool. Um, have we seen this? Yeah, we have. Okay. Ooh, is this a god? Yeah, it's a god. Nilea, keen-eyed, 4 mana, 5, 6, indestructible. As long as your devotion to green is less than 5, Nilea isn't a creature. Creature spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. For 3 mana, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. Elspeth, Conquerors of Death. 5 mana, uh, exile target 
permanent an opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater. Turn 2. Non-creature spells your opponent casts cost 2 more to cast until your next turn. And turn 3. Return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on, on it or a loyalty counter. Um, Teutonic Giant, 4 mana, 3-4. When Teutonic Giant attacks or becomes target of a spell an opponent controls, choose 1. Teutonic Giant deals 3 damage to e each opponent's, or exile the top 2 cards of your library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. Hmm. I like it. I like it. And we also have Perforos Intervention, 1 red and X. Uh, choose 1, create X, create an X1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Or, uh, Fephoros Intervention deals twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker. I think this could be okay. This is an okay card to actually have. Sorry about that. Um, okay, let's see here. Another 10. Where are we at? Okay. Idyllic Tutor. Sorry about that. I just covered my mouth. Idyllic Tutor. Three mana. Search your library for an enchantment card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. Another saga. Kiora bests the sea god. Uh, for seven... Ooh. Seven mana. Okay. Turn one. Create an 8-8 eight, eight blue kraken creature token with hexproof. Turn two. Tap all non-land permanent target opponent controls. They don't untap until they're... <laughs> during their controller's next untap step. Turn 3, gain control of target permanent and opponent controls. This is a really good saga. Like, I really like that. Um, and we also have Setessan Champion. Setessan Champion. 3 mana, 1 3, Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield and your control, put a 1 1 counter on Setessan Champion and draw a card. Ooh, this is also new. Allure of the Unknown, 5 mana. Reveal the top 6 cards of your library. An opponent exiles a non-land card from among them. Um, then you put the rest into your hand. That opponent may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Okay, I, th I think this is good. I think it's good. It's basically a draw, draw 5, but the opponent gets to choose something as well. So I, th I think it's okay. Let's be honest. Oh god, a lot of new stuff. Enigmatic incantation, incarnation rather. Four mana. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search a library for a creature card with converted mana cost to one plus the sacrificed enchantment's converted mana cost. Put that card into the battlefield and you shuffle your library. This is cool. I like this. Uh, another god. Perforos, bronze blooded. For 5 mana, 7 6, indestructible. As long as your devotion to red is less than 5, Perforos isn't the creature. Other creatures you control have haste. That is really good. Um, 3 mana, you may put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand in onto the battlefield. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Okay, this is, this is zombie. Mm -mm -mm, Golgari zombies! I feel it. 4 mana, 0 0, obviously. I mean, it's a Hydra. Uh, Polycaros, Kranos, yeah, Polycaros enters the battlefield with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. It escapes with 12 1 1 counters on it instead. If damage would be dealt to Polycaros while it has a 1 1 counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many 1 1 counters from it. Um, and for 3, uh, Polycaros fights another target creature. Um, and its escape is just 6 mana. That's not too expensive. And you exile 6 other cards from graveyard. Not bad. Not bad. I like this. I like this card. Uh, probably gonna be using it at some point. Wavebreaker Hippocamp. 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever, whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. So if you cast spells, if you draw cards on your opponent's turn, or if you cast spells on your opponent's turn, draw cards. Perfect blue card. Uh, Nadir Kraken, 3 mana, 2-3. Two, Whenever you draw a card, you may pay 1. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on the Deer Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle creature token. That's cool. I like this. This is probably something that you want to be having in your self-mill deck. Mm -mm -mm. Eat to ext 
Extinction? What the crap? Okay, four mana. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Like, it's it's bizarre, okay? They've added a... a this is even an instant. Okay, this is bizarre. They have a card that costs five mana and is exile target creature. And then they have this that is four mana, exile target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. This is basically a surveil card. This is basically a four mana, exile target creature or planeswalker and surveil one. This is, this is really good. Like... And why do... I, I don't understand how they design their cards sometimes. Like, why is the five... Ah, fuck me. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. I guess it's a rare, so I guess that would explain it. Fuck! Ah, crap. Sorry about that. I do hate that it just removes them when you accidentally click. Okay. And a land. Labyrinth of Scophos. Um... Add neutral mana or four and tap. Remove target attacking or blocking creature from combat. Mm, it's okay. And uh, Leo's intervention. Two green, one and X. Search your library for up to X land cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand. Oh. Oh, this is good. Milia's intervention deals twice X damage to each creature. This is really good. I like this. I like this a lot. Okay, Woe Strider. Uh, three mana, three, two. Uh, when Wolf Strider enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token. Sacrifice another creature. Scry 1. Uh, it can also escape for 5 mana. And you exile 4 other cards from a graveyard. Uh, Wolf Strider escapes with 2 1-1 one -one counters, so it becomes a 5-4. Oh, very nice, very nice. I uh, I think we drew a god as well, like when I accidentally clicked off. Oh, that is so annoying. That is tilting. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. An Elder Titan. When Uro enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. So you can't play it from your hand. When Uro enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Its escape cost is four mana. Exile five other cards from your graveyard. I think this is kind of good. I can see this being good. Nessian Boar. I don't think we've seen this. I might have accidentally clicked away from this one. All creatures able to block Nessian Boar do so. Whenever Nessian Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draw a card. The first Iroan gains. Three mana. Create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Then turn two. Put three 1-1 one, one creature... <laughs> put one, three 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control. And turn three. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw 2 cards. And turn 4, create a gold token. What? Okay, the gold token is sacrifice this artifact at 1 mana of any color. Cool. Let's open another 10. Mm. Like, this is going to be a long video. I'm sorry about that. But you know what? That's fine. That's fine. Nightmare Shepherd. Um, 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Flying. Whenever another creature, non-creature token you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that is a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1 one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. Uh, Dream Trawler. For 6 mana. Uh, it has flying and lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, Dream Trawler gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. Whenever Dream Trawler attacks, draw a card. Discard a card. Dream Trawler gains hexproof until end of turn. Tap it. Hmm. Rasta of the Endless Web. We haven't seen this one as well. We accidentally clicked through it probably. Uh, 4 mana, 3, 5. Reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1, 2 green spider token with reach. I like it. Um, last 10, and then we'll do single packs. Probably go through them quite quickly. <gasps> oh my god, we got two planeswalkers in one pack. Yes. Okay. This is gonna be cool. This is gonna be interesting. So we'll start with the god. Wait, we got two planeswalkers and a god in the same pack. What is happening? Okay. Heliod, Sun Crowned. Three mana, five, five. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than five, Heliod isn't a creature. Whenever you gain life, put a one one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. For two mana, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. Really cool. I like it. Then we have Kalex, Destiny's Hand. Four mana with four loyalty counters. Her plus one. 
Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. Her minus three. Exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. And minus seven. Return all enchantment cards from a graveyard to the battlefield. Could be cool. And my 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 hero. My favorite. Ashok, Nightmare Muse. For five mana. Um five loyalty. Plus one. Created two, three black. Blue and black nightmare creature token with whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. Also, minus three, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that player exiles a card from their hand. And minus seven, you may cast up to three face up cards your opponents own from exile without paying their mana cost. I see, I see what this is about. You just exile a crap ton, then use the minus seven to just like, oh. Look, you exiled this. Boom, they're mine now. I like it. I like it. Let's go open these real quick. We'll just have a quick little look sees. I think we had like most of the things. Might have a little look. Uh Seagull Scorn, six mana, return up to three target creatures or and or enchantments to your owner's hand. Tomaturge familiar, three mana, one three. When Tomaturge familiar and spellfield, scry one. Kinda cool, kinda cool. We've seen those. That's a giant. I do like more giants, by the way. Um, Stinging Lionfish, 2 mana, 2, 1. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. Okay, what do we have here? Another e enigmatic incarnation. Um, deny the Divine. Ooh, 3 mana, counter target creature or enchantment spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. An okay 3 mana. Uh, Frick a spawn, 4 mana, 3, 4, escape for 5 mana. Uh, Frick a spawn escapes with 2 1 1 counters on it. When it enters the battlefield this way, each opponent sacrifices a non Gorgon creature. I like it. Let's get through this. Okay. Enemy on, of Enlightenment. Um, 6 mana, 5, 5, flying enemy of enlightenment gets minus 1, minus 1 for each card in your opponent's hand. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Really cool. I like it. Um, this could be really cool. Like, it, it's obviously used in a discard deck. Um, other than that, though, I don't think we have anything new. Fricka's Liberation is new. 3 mana. Uh, choose instant, choose one target opponent, sacrifice creature, or target opponent, sacrifice an, an enchantment. Hero of the Pride, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Hero of the Pride, create creatures you control, get plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. Okay. Ooh, a land. Unknown Shores. Um, tap for ne neutral mana, and uh, 1 mana on tap, add 1 mana of any color. Kinda crap. Or, well, it's not crap, but it's not the best. Um, other than that, though, Chain to Memory could be kind of cool. One mana, target creature gains minus four, minus z zero until end of turn. Then scry one, or scry two, rather. Kind of good, kind of cool. Pharaohs Beyond Death. Let's see, what do we have here? Um, this one we've seen. Chosen from Death. I don't think we've seen this one, though. Ooh, two mana, two, two zero. Um, yeah, we've seen this one, actually. Yeah. Uh, Slaughter Priest of Mogus. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, Slaughter Priest of Mogus gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. For two mana, sacrifice another creature and or enchantment. Slaughter Priest of Mogus gains first strike until end of turn. This is going to be super annoying with the cat. The freaking cat. Cauldron Familiar. Screw that. Um, other than that, though, we got Riptide Turtle. Ooh, exciting. Two mana, zero, five, Flash Defender. It has Flash, though. Kind of cool. Could be used in a uh, in a high alert deck. Let's see here. Another Scryland. Mm -hmm. Mystic Repeal. Daybreak Chimera. This is interesting. Five, five mana, three, three. This spell costs X, three <laughs> costs X less to a cast where your where X is your devotion to white. I can't even talk. But it is kind of good, though, for two mana, a three three, and it's flying, so it's kind of it's kind of okay. Um, relentless pursuit. Oh. Ooh. 
It's okay. It's a little bit expensive, though. Okay. Another one of the snake, Lamia. Um, Omen of the Forge. Two mana, flash when Omen of the Forge enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. And then you can sacrifice it to scry two. Um, Wrap in Flames. For four mana, Wrap in Flames deals one damage to, up to, e <laughs> to each up to three target creatures. Those creatures can't block this turn. That was worded weirdly. Okay. And is this was this my last one? Yeah, this is the last. No, okay, one more. Dream Dream Trawler. I do like Dream Trawler. It's gonna be interesting to use. Um, Underworld Rage Hound. We haven't seen two mana, three one. Um, Underworld Rage Hound attacks each combat if able, and it can escape. It escapes with a one one counter. Not that nice. Um, Sentinel's Eyes. Enchanted creature. One mana. Enchanted creature has plus one plus one and has vigilance. It can escape for one mana. Um, and that was about it. Yeah, I think we've seen everything else. This is the last pack, you guys. So let's hope for something interesting. Oh, that is actually interesting. I mean, a scry land isn't interesting, but it's good. Uh, Elspeth's Nightmare. Three mana. A saga. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less. Target opponent reveals their hand and you choose a non-creature, non-land card from, from it. That player discards that card. Exile target opponent's graveyard. This is actually really good because this is like a different way to get the same effect from that Ashok has. And it's kind of important that you get that. Okay, but otherwise I think we've gone through everything. I feel good. Let's open this little uh, vault as well. Ooh, boom. Kind of nice. So we have a crap ton of cards to craft with. We have a lot of card from Theros Beyond Death. I am so excited. Next week, we're going to be playing a crap ton of Theros Beyond Death. We're going to be stomping. I don't know what we're going to do. I have no idea. Like, I am way too excited for this. Let's actually go to the collection real quick and just have a look. Like... I am extremely excited about this. It is going to be so fun. A lot of new cards to play around with, a lot of new deck ideas to try out. It's going to be great. I love it. I love it. But I hope you guys love it as well. Please do comment down below and tell me what is the first deck you are going to build. Also, what are the cards that gets you most excited? Like, what is your hype for this set? Remember to like the video as well if you did like it. I mean, I was basically just opening a crap ton of packs, but I hope you did enjoy it and um, got to see some of the cards as well. Also, subscribe if you want more Magic the Gathering. You don't want to miss out on any of the decks that I'm going to make, so remember, hit that bell. I have been you, lad. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.